All right, brothers and sisters, today is another bright new day that the Lord has made, and uh, we are going to rejoice and be glad in it as we study His Word. And uh, in today's Bible lesson, we are going to answer some very baffling question which confuses most people, especially uh, this is to the people who are atheists, okay? I want to try and encourage them so that they can find God, all right? So we're going to be answering this question, which is uh, always commonly asked by atheists. Is there evidence for the existence of God? Is there evidence? Can you say this is, this is what can make me believe? So this is what you're going to be tackling today. Is there evidence for the existence of God? I don't know, I don't know if you're ready. And if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, now, one thing I have to tell you is that uh, there is evidence for the existence of God. It's there. And uh, not everyone finds that evidence compelling or convincing. And this does not mean that such evidence is non-existent. Because most of those who deny the evidence of God, they demand forms of proof or levels of certainty that are either irrelevant or unreasonable. Looking at logic, experience, and empirical observations, there is much evidence for the existence of God. Assessing evidence includes properly categorizing the evidences that we have. But we see some some of the people, they bulk the idea of evidence for a God who is invisible and immaterial. However, even the hardened skeptics accept the meaningful existence of many such things, such as the laws of logic. How do you explain logic? Logic is neither material nor visible, yet is legitimately considered real and can be both perceived and examined. One cannot see logic or mechanically quantify it, but this does not justify any useful claim that logic does not exist. And the same is true to varying degrees with other concepts such as morality. And this point also establishes that logic and philosophy are relevant when discussing evidence for the existence of God. And as demonstrated in the case of the laws of logic, even empirical proof is unconvincing. That does not mean the subject in question cannot be real. The probability that God exists in no way does it reduce the, sim- the, the, the simply or the simplicity because empirical evidence is subject to interpretation. It is at last possible that something intangible, non material, and meaningful actually exists. And with that in mind, There are several broad categories of evidence for the existence of God and none are self-sufficient to prove that God exists or that the Bible's description of him is accurate because when you combine when you combine however they form a compelling argument that the God described in scripture is very real. Now let me give you a few points and try to explain and see if you can understand. Now think about this. Human beings have a natural sense of God, a natural sense of God. And historians and anthropologists alike recognize belief in some supernatural reality as common to almost all human beings who have ever lived. And the number of people who categorically reject every form of higher power or spirit is vanishingly small. This is true even in profoundly secular cultures, even further secular fields of study such as cognitive science and pure 
pure scientific understanding they suggest that such beliefs are ingrained in the natural state of the human mind and at the very least this suggests that there is something real to be perceived just as the senses just like sight and hearing are targeted at the actual phenomena we also have to have that feeling in us all of us we have that feeling of wanting to worship something maybe worship a deity worship ourselves worship money worship cars worship this there's a sense of worship in all of us another point that i want to tell you is that think about logic logic because logic points to the existence of god there are several logic based arguments indicating that god exists some like the ontological argument are not considered especially convincing though they ha- they are very hard to refute others such as the kalam cosmological argument are considered much more robust continuing along the same spectrum concepts such as intelligent design teleological arguments they make logical inter entrances from observation to argue from for the existence of god logic hmm. okay now what about general observations that support the existence of god do we have some just like i've said teleological arguments arise because so many aspects of reality appear to be deliberately arranged and that evidence in of itself is often extremely indicative of a creator a good example is the big bang that's a classic example this theory was initially resisted by atheists for being too religious and then the idea of a non eternal universe as demonstrated by secular science is strongly supportive of the claims made in the early chapters of the bible still not believing okay let's talk about history literature and archaeological support which supports the existence of god let's look at about that history literature archaeology mm-hmm. because whether critics critics like it or not the bible is a valid form of evidence for the existence of god not merely because the bible says so but because the bible has proved to be so reliable dismissing it as bias simply because they say things that skeptics do not accept is not a rational response and that would be as irrational as dismissing every book describing julius caesar and then claiming there are no records describing julius caesar the reliability of the bible and its coordination with secular history and archaeology are as reasonable points to raise when it comes to discussing the existence of god okay still not believing yet okay let's talk about personal experiences that support the existence of god because obviously these are compelling only for those particular persons yet many people have come to know and understand god in a deeply personal way so far as those experiences coordinate with other evidence they are reasonable to consider as part of the evidence for the existence of god and also another thing evidence will never overcome obstin or obstinance perhaps the weakest response to evidence of god's existence is ignoring it claiming there is no evidence because closely related is the suggestion that a skeptic finds the evidence uncompelling and this kind of claim often comes with an ever shifting threshold of proof and as the same thing happened with the big bang theory even when a position is effectively proved the committed skeptic can always pivot to claim that 
this proof actually supports his fundamental views just as one person's belief is not hard evidence regarding God's existence one person's disbelief is not hard evidence of the opposite no this is especially true if that uh, just given that God existence touches on issues like personal morality and autonomy both in the scripture and in, in the daily life it's common to see examples of those presented with more than uh, enough evidence yet we, we, we choose to stubbornly ignore this we stubbornly ignore all this the Bible has told us so many things that prove that the God exists and combining what we know of experience, logic, history, science and other disciplines there's more than enough evidence that God exists thankfully we are not expected to find all that evidence in order to have a right relationship with him rather we are obligated to absorb what we can see and understand and follow the process of asking, seeking and knocking because when you seek you shall find when you knock the door shall be open to you when you seek you shall find whatever you're looking for you're going to find it all right and that's the end of today's lesson hope to see you in the next one